All right, thanks for staying with us. So last year, the World Bank described um, the level of quality of infrastructure in Nigeria as low, despite the federal government's claim of borrowing to finance infrastructure. Now, the government, um, the report rather stated that the, the country ranked 132 out of 137 countries for infrastructure in the 2018 Global Competitive Index. Nigeria's physical infrastructure gap is estimated to reach um, three, three trillion US dollars over the next 30 years. And at the current rate of expenditure allocation, it will take 300 years to close the country's current infrastructural gap. Mm -hmm. It goes without saying that the poor state of infrastructure in Nigeria has a severe effect on the life of the citizens and the state of the economy, um, of course, the economic uh, activities. Now, from the incessant electricity issues, housing problem, lack of proper water, and um, sanitation infrastructure, it is clear why we need to address the existing maintenance culture in Nigeria. So today we are asking what the impact of this zero maintenance culture um, on Nigeria's infrastructure, what is the impact? Um, now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. Um, Jennifer, you were going to follow up on the story for the flooding. Yeah. Um, so if I remember correctly, I don't know if they fixed that area, but um, growing up, because I grew up around that area, right? And I remember that they always have, there was this, the gutters that were really wide yes. and big and deep. So there was no, there was, there was nothing that protects you. Sometimes if you have to go to Abature, you probably have to jump over the gutter or there's always this Small tiny planks. plank that they put around that area. And I don't know if that's still the situation right now because thinking about it and that is where this happened. So it's like once there is that flood, it there is nothing, the right? It pushes everything down to that to gutter the, to the, to the, uh, so if really anyone falls in there how do you save somebody like that and it's really really sad because i don't know i don't know it's tiring very tiring so maintenance culture is not something that is you know strange to to us like knowing that we have zero maintenance culture is not a strange thing um but i want to ask why has it lingered you know, why are we not seeing... So, I mean, you put a beautiful road, for instance. You put the, medi the medians and all of that. You wake up. As soon as the government is leaving, the next thing you're seeing that somebody is coming to pull up all those things. Nobody is holding them accountable. Nobody is arresting anybody. Nobody has gone to jail for vandalizing pu public um, um, infrastructure, Right? So, if we really want to count the cost of what this zero maintenance culture is on Nigerians' infrastructure, like really, we literally cannot even put a cost to it. There's, a, there's an audio that is going viral on TikTok. Um, seven days, I no go front, I no go back, I, I, I did for Sapele Road, you know. That was a driver lamenting that he's been stuck in a particular spot, he's not going forward, he's not going back. But they've used it to, to turn music. I did for Sapeleros, uh, I know go front, I know go back, and all of that. You know, I know I, I know fit to go front, I know fit to go back. You understand? That was the, 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 the summary, long and short of it. Yeah. Right? We've not even put a cost to how much we have lost in terms of revenue. Mm. Right? With this poor or poorly maintained infrastructure. We've not put a cost to why we are not able to expand our infrastructures. You know why? Every government that comes in will first of all go back and say, oh, this uh, prop, uh, hospital that was built, they are renovating. You see them spending millions of naira and millions of dollars on maintenance, on, re uh, on renovation, on, on renovation, on renovation. Which, in my opinion, I believe that if there was a proper structure to ensure that there was maintenance of those properties. We don't need to go back and revisit. Instead, we are building newer infrastructures and then maintaining them. We don't need to, go because those ones are well maintained. Yeah. So I don't even know how to measure what we have lost or what we are losing 
as a result of zero maintenance culture. But let me come to you, NJ. So when it comes to maintenance, we can see it clearly. In every in, in area or, or the sense of it, which would include from the airports, when you go to the airports, they tell you, you know, we just have a newly built airport. And then you get there, and then within two weeks or a month of its opening or its um, unveiling, you find out that the lift isn't working, there's no light at some, at some points, the escalators are not working, some doors are not opening, and things like that. And when you even come to maintenance, there are even different types of maintenance. What we do most of the time in, in, in Nigeria is corrective. So we always, because the jobs are substandard and not done properly, every, that's why every year, when a new, every time when a new government comes in, they have to correct what the previous government has, maybe the um, damage that has they been done. They also correct it poorly, yeah. state it there. Because yes, somebody has to come again. Because actually, there's so, there's supposed to be preventive maintenance. Mm. And then, before even the corrective. So there are different even levels of maintenance. But we always find ourselves doing corrective maintenance most of the time because even at the beginning, we don't use the right materials. We're always using substandard materials and things like that. And we always, like you say, they give the costing and the costing runs in billions and trillions and what have you. And every dispensation has a budget for these same things. Every time, every four years, we have a new, every time we have a budget, we have a budget for infrastructure for the development of infrastructure and for the maintenance of infrastructure. So you always wonder why the money uh, attributed to the maintenance is not used for maintenance and the money, you're not seeing new structures being put up. And it's, it's a major, this thing has become a major problem because it affects every area of our lives. When you talk about transport, when the transport system is not good, we end up, most of us, when the roads are not good, we end up at the mechanic every month because you have the whole first of all the whole bottom of your car everything is gone and then you have you know potholes have damaged the tires have damaged different parts of your car so it's this thing boils down when we have bad housing when we don't have um, you know adequate housing or adequate water it affects as a family you see cholera you see different you know illnesses you see flies you see so it it has a we have to understand that we it, all these things have a ripple effect and it all i always say it starts with us we as Nigerians, we don't, that's why I keep saying we, we're not even ready for the kind of change we want. Because we as Nigerians, we throw out things, trash. The trash that we throw out on the road and on the streets of Lagos is what gets into the gutter and clogs it. We, I know that is the, the responsibility of the government, of the state government, to, and the institutions and the agencies to make sure that these things are taken care of and well maintained. But guess what? We run a population of 200 million they're about and counting. And if 200 people are littering the whole streets of Lagos, how, would the men, how many people would you require in order to maintain Lagos to that standard that we're looking for? <sighs> Jola, let me come to you. I mean, I would always come back to the fact that Nigerians, whether we like to accept it or not, we're just wicked and we're selfish people. It's, it's as simple as that. And um, it starts from the commissioner or the uh, governor or the um, local government chairman or the agency director or PAMSEC who says, okay, you know what, rather than give the, the construction of a road to a company that has been building roads with a track record of, you know, solid roads and all that, you give it to your friend. Your friend gives it to a shoddy company that is just trying to find their feet or a company that they just knocked together. Nobody is doing any um, quality monitoring quality and evaluation, control. no quality control, nothing. The most important thing is money comes out of the government coffers. Taxpayers are paying for it. And it's as if, you know what, you get whatever we give to you and keep your mouth shut. Again, because citizens, we do not understand the power that we have. We do not understand the fact that at some level, we can actually sue certain people. And until we understand that, that we can take people to court, we can demand accountability, Nigeria will keep being a free-for-all. I mean, it's a free-for-all. Nobody cares. And then guess what? 
these people they probably fly jeeps and all that okay maybe a jeep can probably navigate through you know when there is flood and all that or they can fly in their helicopters and all that go, go. if you're traveling out of lagos it's even worse like you will be literally scared to move out of lagos to go and do anything ordinary Ogo state if it rains from itoike to in fact itoike is almost like halfway between lagos and Ogo state Ogun State is supposed to be gateway states. Now, you are supposed to expect that a lot of food coming into Lagos come through that road. So it begs the question, if the roads are not accessible, how do we transport food? How do manufacturers, factories, goods and services, how do they come into Lagos? But guess what? I can bet you, if the governor of Lagos State is moving from Lagos, um, the governor of Ogun State is moving from Lagos to Ogun State, he will probably fly an helicopter. He doesn't and guess what we don't hold anybody accountable so until we get to that point where we i mean where we take into cognizance everything that's enough is, is enough is trying to put out there in terms of policy and understand our responsibilities and our rights we won't see any change it will still be the same we will keep on being the casualties of this senselessness that's all i can say and then of course as citizens we do the most a newly constructed road, at least I have witnessed that, a newly constructed road, you find people selling gala in traffic and all that. They know that if there is free flow of traffic, they can hawk their wares. So they go in the night under the cover of darkness. They dig new roads. Of course, nobody cares. If anybody says anything, they'll say, please, mind your business. We, too, we want to, again, there is no enforcement of law. There is absolutely... Nigeria is almost as if Nigeria is just, you know, we'll just take as much as you can and every other person face front. If you want to talk, you to take your own and let me just be. So it, it, it's a sad place, really. It is. Okay. I know you've raised a very, very valid point around digging of holes. Mm. But I remember that there was a time a governor in this state said street hawking. Street hawking was banned. Mm. Right? Whatever happened to those laws? Because the truth is, if there are no traffics, you will mm. not see people selling in traffic. They will go and yeah. find alternate source of income. That's why you see when you travel abroad, there are millions of malls, shopping malls, for you to go in, drive in, and even mm. if it is one, one pack of a uh, sausage you want to buy, you must go, pack, buy it, and you, you did. So, do you understand? Like, the sanity that people have abroad i mean i was in my sister's apartment like in, in their estate and i saw where they are bathing dogs where they bait their dogs it is it is so clean you know that you can actually bait a newborn baby there and i i, I when i saw it i shook my head i said to myself we are human beings they bath for nigeria you can't even like literally you can't do, I literally will have to hold myself. Do you understand? Mm. In their estate, they see the swimming pool. You would think you are in a five-star hotel. Yeah. The swimming pool that is within their estate, not even something that is like, you know, it, you would think you are in a five-star hotel. They are, for, they are lobby. They are for you where if you don't want people to come into your house, you can entertain your guests in a, in a common area. You would think you are somewhere else. Right? These are people that understand value for human life. Let me tell you something that I think with maintenance culture. If we as people start to set up standards, mm. it go hard for me to look this and say, I won't go spoiler. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if I've seen the way the standard of this thing is, ah, even me say, go say, no, no, no. Even me, I need to relax in this thing. Do you understand? Mm. So when I'm getting up, I would ad arrange the, this. If you, you needed to have seen me in that their lobby, I was helping them to arrange the tropillos where because when I came in, everything was intact. It was put together. Right? So I wanted to leave it better than I met it. Have we ever talked about public toilets? Mm. This one, generally, it's not even only uh, government building. Generally, it's like we have a, a phobia for clean toilets in this country. Mm. Because if you go to even... The, the, the top organizations mm. just say make you go that's why most of when I enter your organization you are not your toilet I'll go check first to know who you be because when you even go to those toilets you will be wondering like are there human beings in this building it's like it is a crime for you to have a very decent toilet yeah. 
So mo most of us, when we went abroad the first time, because of the way the white, the toilets were pristine, they were white. We used to sit on it. We don't know say toilet disease, did you? Mm. Even though say the thing clean, you white. Because that was how you know when you have you've been badly, um, your your mind has been badly programmed to believe that it is only when a toilet looks looks brownish and whatever that's what makes it a, a dirty, a dirty toilet. toilet. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm. So when you traveled abroad and you saw clean toilet, you just sit down on it until you started having you know toilets the toilets uh, what's it called the things yeah, that come with infection. with infections and yeah. all of that then you now realize that ah it's not because the toilet look but you could see right so when it comes to this maintainers standards first have to be set yeah. do you understand and i think that standard comes from whatever we first of all we 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 we, we develop so mm. once we set a standard do you understand if they're born you were Go and vandalize it. Or, do you understand? Once you set those standards and people see it, the reason that they can take a, a, a whatever to go and hammer a road and dig up a hood is because the road in itself too is not... There's it's a road if you like put... Yeah. Uh, what's it called? I, you would need to literally use a, a, a digger or whatever. What's the name of that thing? To mm, dig out the true. hole. You need, to, you need to deploy machinery to come and dig it's it out. Yeah. But we don't have all of those. So if we're talking about the cost... Every government that you see now, they spend so much money. The other day, they say they want to renovate National Assembly with billions of naira. I'm wondering, how did we get to that stage? Do you understand? Mm. Do you know how much we are losing with all this so-called renovation, renovation, renovation? We would have been using it to, 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 to create, uh, what's it called, newer infrastructures. But let's take a break, right? I want to open the phone lines. Hopefully, we can get a few calls in. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Should be coming down, right? <laughs> this guy should be coming down. I'm just upset. All right, so if you just tuned in, we're discussing the the impact of this um, zero maintenance culture on our infrastructure. Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to zero eight one eight zero three four six six three. You can also tweet at us at Way Show Africa One with the hashtag Way Show. Now our phone line is now open. You know the rules. Turn off the volume of whatever device it is that you're watching us from. Um, the number to call is 0702500 That's the number to call. NJ, you were going to come in. Yes, I was going to say that there was a recent story. I think it happened earlier on, I think late yesterday, 3 a.m. in the morning yesterday. You know, a motorist uh, called in to inform the police of a vandal that was um, tearing apart the Ibutemeta Eru Division uh, bridge. That you know, towards the end of a Butemeta and, and he was caught at 3 a.m. in the morning. So these are the issues. So just like um, you were saying, Uwa, these are the issues that we keep having. And that's why for me, I keep coming to we as a people. Because it starts with us. If we do not create and, you know, cultivate the culture of maintaining, even within our immediate environment, this is how we go. So they built a bridge. And because you do not own a car, or because you think that you will not be affected, you go and you vandalize the bridge. What of, have you ever stopped to think if, you're, if you have a family member on the bridge the day it collapses? Let me take our first caller. This way. Obox from Ikorodu, I believe. Obot from Ikorodu. You're alive. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, honestly, uh, I, I like your mood this evening. I really <laughs> like your mood. Yeah, good evening. Yeah. Most of us are in that mood. But we don't, uh, we can't talk out. Because for, for, uh, let, let, let no, no, one not be arrested. Your mood this evening is very, very understood. You know, because what we are going... Oh, wow. So sorry. Sorry, try to call back. My sister, if they want to arrest, maybe they arrest now. What did you mean finish? Jonas, I'm like, I am, I'm like tired. I don't know how, how to pretend anymore. I don't think like, would you watch your pretend. child? No, on a serious note, would you watch your child suffer like that? Would you watch your child die like that? Come on, let's start to, start to think about other people other than ourselves. It is so, it is so wicked and selfish. It's not like these things, let me tell you something. Everything that happens in Nigeria, 
right? It's not something that is new to us. Yeah. It's something that has been happening. And we refuse to do something about Loma it. Loma from Abia, your life. Good evening, my guest keep in the house. Good evening, Good evening Loma. It's in my mind that says, and it is true, that, and I'm not accusing anybody. If you want to arrest me, arrest, expand your music. Expand yourself. I will be ready to go in. Now, let me just tell you. Zero maintenance culture has made Kiko Tepeno, who might have put the Kino road, in a deplorable state, in Abia State. Then, the Ohotia road, still a federal road, in a deplorable state. Ozua Kone, Ohotia, and Ofuku road, is in a deplorable state. Now, when you see all these things, you start asking, who are, who are those representing us? Who are those taking, they doing, they, that are saddled with the responsibility of this framework or all this? You don't see them doing the whole thing. So it's quite unfortunate that this zero method has, I'm telling you, my dear sister, in Abia State now, this railway, in Abia State, they have killed the rail line because they were not able to maintain it. They have now removed all the rail line in Abia State. No more rail line. You ask. Why is it so? So, if this present administration will, as the way they are going, if they will do the needful, let them make sure that they, they, they should remove zero maintenance culture and make sure that they do their work and every other agency. Please help me tell the government, let them return back our rail line that they, they remove. We don't have rail line again in Abia State, in Umaya. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Thank Loma. You, Loma. you know, I saw I saw a video. I watched a video about um, the dilapidated state of Obudukato Ranch, mm -hmm. right? And that place looks like a ghost town. Mm -hmm. You know, Obudukato Ranch was once celebrated. People yeah. went there for vacation. People it wanted attraction. to. Yeah, it was an attraction site, right? And it's like people keep saying, "Oh, why do people? Why do Nigerians keep leaving Nigeria to other places?" It's because we have nothing here, right? And the things that we have. Are not being maintained properly and the person who made the video um showed us the the cable cars when they made that cable lines and the cars people were very excited about it and that was one of the reasons why people wanted to go all the way to cross river to see it and to experience it but it is as good as dead there is nothing there anymore the entire place was just ghostly you're even speaking back this is back i had an experience because i've been there i visited and this was 2000 and you know mid 2000s and even the cable car wasn't working as it then so i'm not very surprised that is the way it is and even like Loma said this uh you have been how the road that we passed that is that is where i'm from mm. so i understand his pain because they took, they took me to ng's village through since i was my little, heart was in my mouth since i was little in short over the years i think some people have you know, mm. try to maintain it. But since I was little, it's been like that. Going to going back home was. Yeah, well, let me take Ogbonna from Portacot. Ogbonna, you're alive. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. I'm so sorry. So sorry that you people have to feel this bad about our roads mm. and all that frustrations are not um, maintained in this country. The truth is. The government officials and their, I don't know how to put it, how do you award a good contract to someone that you do not bother about adding another, I don't know how to put it, where they can be able to continue to maintain that project or that, pro, that, that road for another five years or ten years. That can be done because you don't just award contract and they do the road and then everybody gets away both because the people that constructed it and every other person leaves the road, it will go bad. So you should be added in the contract that this road, you are going to maintain it for another five years. You, the contractor that is constructing this road, the same thing goes to the buildings. Include there, where someone can continue, that the, the constructors or the contractors, whoever they are, will continue to maintain such road for another two years or three years or five years. That way, that uh, uh, infrastructure will last. Thank you. What so you much. said, or what you said, it's all abroad. That is what they do. 
they add it to the to the uh, the contract uh, language or whatever they call it, where they will continue to maintain that that road or that building yeah. or whatever it is okay. or the bridge for the last five years or ten years. Absolutely. And the government is is on is their duty to fund it. I, I like that, that, I like that, that's where it should go. Okay, thank you, Bon. I like where you're going with the conversation, I, and I want Diola to come in. But the truth is, again, they, people would argue, and Uti, if you are watching, she's the one that will argue with me that um, Leki Ekpe Expressway, that um, because of the toll, right? Um, that's why it is the revenue from the toll. And I beg to disagree, right? This road is too small of a road for you to toll it in the way you're tolling it, mm -hmm. right? See, there is revenue. That is being generated from commercial buses from commercial like so for instance now if there are trucks like commercial users of these roads are the ones that are supposed to be taxed not private uh, uh what's it called uh, car owners so once you are able to uh, properly collect those taxes i suppose what they are having all these touts on the road right you'll be able to have revenue to maintain those roads enough revenue right it doesn't have to be on the citizens we're already paying taxes anyway right so if you are able to take the the commercial um, um what's it called users of these roads both the trucks and all of those things and tax them appropriately not the one that they are collecting money on the streets and we don't know where the money is going to mm. let me take somebody else they don't want me to talk again sa usa thank you for calling sa you're live sa are you there did we lose her Oh, sorry. Try to call back. I mean, so Jola, I want you to come in, right? Uh, uh, um, how do we, how do we prefer a solution if we were to? Because I don't want to leave this conversation all doom and gloom. We, as the people, we must imbibe the culture of excellence individually before we can now, before it becomes a national movement. If I, Adiola, as an individual can put excellence in everything I do. I'm on the road, you know, with the, with the culture of excellence. I know that I can't drop anything on the road. I know okay. that I can't do this. I, I know that I can't do that. And then, you know, from there, it becomes a, a situation where um, everybody knows that, okay. listen, this is the right way, that is the right Absolutely. way. The second thing I would Let say... Let me, Jola, um, sorry, just give me a minute. I think Essay is back. Essay, you're live. Sorry, Diola. Hello. I'll come back to you. All right. Essay, you're live. Hello? Hello? Yes, go ahead, quickly. Essay, we can hear you. Go ahead. Hello? Go ahead, Essay. We can hear you. Oh, I think the network is bad. So sorry, you can try to call back again. Jola, please wrap up your thoughts on that. Okay, so the second thing I would say is enforcement. I mean, there must be punishment. It must be a criminal offense. You know, if you don't, if you if you provide substandard work where you are a government contractor, it should be it, you should be penalized. I mean, this is not even a case of pay a fine of you should actually go to jail. You know, from the person who awarded the contract to the departments that didn't ensure that there was proper monitoring and evaluation, to the all the contractors, they should go to jail. And there should be a court that will not be biased, that will try that case. Mm. I mean, when we begin to see examples Absolutely. of that... Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jola, for yeah. that. Let me take Daniel, I believe, from Lecky. You're live. Daniel, go ahead. Uh-oh. We're having problems with the phone lines. Daniel, apologies. I think we're having issues with the line. You know, um, I would say that if we have... <laughs> if we, if I we, like within Jola they talk. She, she's, she's a sweet me for body. Because you see all these things where they talk now, it doesn't really concern me. My father has turned down a federal government road job because of the shadiness of the job. Asking him to just go and pour sand on the road. Kawasa, kasa, kawai. You understand? My father says, so, that was a Kasakawa, so somebody will drive on that road and die. Oh, yeah. And he will not put the blood on my head. I would rather leave the job, right? If those, if we begin to even arrest all those contractors that do shabby jobs, right, we will get it. We will get somewhere. But you see, they cannot arrest them because they collected bribe from them too. Yeah. They collected kickbacks. Let me take Daniel. Oh, who is back again? You're alive. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. 
Yeah. Uh, well, I'm actually enjoying your uh, discussions with the other ladies. But I think the point should be, where exactly are we going with uh, the culture of maintenance in our country? I think it starts from the home. I remember when we used to be younger, back in school, our teachers, teachers starting uh, regulations of cleanliness from home, even on the street, by picking up pieces of paper or whatever debt you have on the floor, even in schools. But recently or presently, how many schools do that anymore? How many of them tell young uh, students or pupils from primary schools how to be clean, how to be uh, uh, patriotic to their country? Because it starts from the home. This Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. As you grow, as you grow, that culture then the, comes. Uh, it grows to... with us. Absolutely, I, I agree with you. Let's wrap up this conversation, ladies. Because <laughs> so, I don't get anything I want to talk about. When you say he goes sweet quickly. <laughs> so for me, I agree completely with what um, Daniel is, saying, what Daniel is yeah. saying. I also agree with Diola as well. There needs to be penalty for this. I mean, if you even look at how we live, sometimes you live where you're, you're currently staying, in your building or your apartment, and you're moving to another place, or maybe the agent has shown you like 10 houses, nine of them are really bad and terrible. And you can see that the landlords who are lives not... There? Yeah. Who you, you Is see that the only landlord? Like, Is what's it tenants? You see tenants, you see their room mm -hmm. looking terrible, the toilets. And you'll be asking yourself, how can you live in this being. state? Mm. Right? And you can't even move in there because you know that the landlord will leave it for you to take care of. Mm. And it just doesn't make any sense. So I think we all need to do our part, right? But I think, I think that the, 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 the major part of the work is on the government. Mm. Right? Just lay structures. There needs to be proper structures. There needs to be proper standards. Absolutely. And let us follow That's through no on standard. that. Yeah. Okay. Jola, do you have one more thing to say? A second? Ah. Excellence, excellence, excellence. We must do better as a people. We must um, have a higher standard of ourselves. Absolutely. We must tell ourselves that cleanliness is next. Is 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 the is the very best of what we can. I mean, from cleanliness, it, it speaks to our values mm -hmm. as a people. If we don't have values as a people, there's absolutely nothing that can be done. We will just keep thinking that we can just live life anyhow. Absolutely. Nobody would arrest or nobody would... There, there are no repercussions. Right. <laughs> more like, more like. And yeah. in two seconds. Yeah, for me, I'll just say we're responsible for our environment and it is our responsibility to keep ourselves healthy by keeping our environment healthy and it mm. starts with us. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't think I have... <laughs> I have <laughs> what I want to say should come out of my mouth, but let me leave it there. The truth is... Um, Let's, just, let's first of all set up, set a precedent. Let's set a standard, right? And everybody will fall in line. There has to be penalties. There has to be penalties. This maintenance culture matter is definitely not over. As you can see that my blood is still hot. <laughs> we will definitely <laughs> bring it back. But thank you so much for watching. And apologies to those that we couldn't take your messages and, and calls. You know, the, today the lines were really jammed. Thank you for watching. Now, please remember, you can join us across all our social media handle, like, share, invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation, right? And if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. Um, it says, another flaw in the human character is that everybody wants to build and nobody wants to do the maintenance, right? So, I mean, this is important. Um, we're hoping that we will move from this. Uh, we will start to see a better you know, culture in Nigeria. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao.